So this, this is actually going to be more of the form of a, an extended complaint, because why not, why not do that? It's that one. This one? Yes, this one. So I don't know whether you have PDF or slides there. Yes, we get to, we get to expand it out and see how we... I can be a slide master. You can be my slide master. Okay. Excellent. Delegated. I know you're very tall. You don't need to stay. Well, yes. Yes, I, w I will prance around on the stage. Okay, so as I said, this is an extended complaint. So first slide, if you would, um, which is why am I standing here complaining about gene therapy to you people? So the story is that, that I co-founded a company a few years ago, and um, in the course of all of the stuff we did, we, we ran a thymus program for a while where the job was to get gene therapy vectors into a thymus, which is a tiny little organ. Um, and then right now we focus on atherosclerosis where we give cells the ability to break down cholesterol safely, much more safely than you can achieve with any other methodology, which also involves getting the genes into cells um, in some way, shape or form throughout the body. So we have done a lot of gene therapy, a lot, with, with scores of studies and lots of different methods trying to explore all of what's out there. And in the course of this, I somewhat came to the point of deciding that, that modern gene therapy is terrible um, in specific ways, and those ways happen to be right in the middle of where I want to be. So, so the only recourse is to stand in front of a room of investors and scientists and complain about this in the hope that something will happen. So please, please move on. So it, for the those who don't really know, um, because we have to start from the basis here, what is a gene therapy? Uh, and the story is that it's, it's a way to get proteins to express in a cell, really, um, either more of them or less of them. And there are various very straightforward ways, allegedly, of doing this. And really, you're delivering either, either DNA sequences or messenger RNA into cells in order to get them to change their behavior and produce more or less of certain specific proteins. And this is way better than small molecules. Um, because at least here, your off-target effects are going to be related to exactly the proteins you're manipulating and not anything else at all because small molecules do infinite things. Ask somebody sometime about what we know about what aspirin does, that thing that we've been using for infinite time, and they will say, well, yeah, well, yeah, give me some dollars and I will, I will come back to you on that. We don't know everything that aspirin does, um, let alone any other small molecule that's used in therapy, and that's a really big problem. Um, and that's why the future is gene therapy. It's just not really there yet, or at least it's unevenly distributed. <laughs> next, next slide. You thought you could escape there. Yeah, no, not quite. Not there quite. So I mean, I can come back and do that if you like. So in principle, a gene therapy is two things. Um, you have a delivery system, which is important because you want to get the genes into the, into the cells. And then you have some kind of payload that engages with cellular gene therapy, uh, gene, gene expression mechanisms in order to produce the proteins, which is what you care about. Um, so for example, plasmids, little circular sequences of DNA that work really well if you can get them to the cell nucleus. You have the viruses, which combine the delivery mechanism and the payload. The viral capsid is the delivery mechanism, and the payload is the viral genome. Um, and then you have messenger RNA. It's very popular right now because uh, it's being used for vaccines um, in very small ways, but in theory you could deliver a lot more of it and throughout the body and get expression for the short term. So, and, and there's lots of different ways of getting these into cells, but they boil down to a few different categories. You've got viruses, you've got lipid nanoparticles, you've got other types of nanoparticles, and really that's it. Um, there's only so many ways we know to get past the cell membrane. So, next slide. So the problem is that what we have now is not optimal. It really is not optimal at all. What we want for, for the optimal creation of new companies is that eight out of 10 uses, you just go get the gene therapy platform and you plug in the use and you go make it work. And that's what we don't have. We don't have a gene therapy platform that just lets you do this for eight out of 10 potential uses in the body. You can't just say, hey, I'd like to upregulate this gene in this tissue over here, go for it. Let's plug it all in, and, and we can do it in, um, in the same amount of time as it takes to go find a small molecule that can slightly tinker with the problem. And that's why we don't have infinite gene therapy companies. It's not, it's not a matter of, um, of there not being the will. It's a matter of not having the technology to actually do this. Next slide. So what do we care about in a gene therapy? In a little more detail, because we have to talk about details. 
So we want, firstly, we want to get your cargo into the cell in some way, into the cell cytoplasm, past the cell membrane. And this is fundamentally what viral capsids and lipid nanoparticles and all the rest of it are for. Cells don't just take up anything. They're very well regulated. The whole point of a cell membrane is to, is to allow only some stuff in, and that stuff is generally not your vector. So secondly, you need access to the cell nucleus, because that's where most of the DNA is going to be processed. Um, if you're putting DNA into a cell, it needs to get into the nucleus, and that's, that's a tough problem, because that's a whole different set of um, mechanisms. You also want to get into the mitochondria, because you may want access to the mitochondrial genome as well. So you also care about the specific payloads and how they work, whether they're RNA or DNA, how do you make them? This is actually fairly, fairly easy. And I say fairly easy, and we will qualify that later. If you had a decent delivery system, you'd just put in the sequence you want and magic happens. So we want to get insertion into the genome for permanency. This is a more of a rare disease thing than anything else. You want to fix a rare disease by changing the genome permanently, but generally we want to avoid this. Um, not necessarily because it's bad, but because the FDA thinks it's bad. Um, and that's kind of an important topic. How much of the field is actually steered by what the FDA thinks? Very large amount. Um, we want preferential delivery to some tissues. That's really important, because almost every gene in the body, even if it's something like FOXN1, which is only really expressed and useful in the thymus, still does things in other parts of the body. And you don't want to use it in other parts of the body. You only want it to work in um, where it's actually going to go, which means you want restriction of the execution of the payload of the, um, of the gene therapy to specific tissues or cell types. And this can be done with DNA by using promoters such that if a specific gene is activated, then your payload is activated, and if it isn't, it isn't. And the duration of expression, also very important. In every therapy, you need to have something that runs um, for a set amount of time, and the FDA will look at you weird if that set amount of time for your therapy is years, where the disease is um, you know, the common cold. If you have a cure for the common cold that is a permanent genetic alteration, great. That will never, ever, ever, ever be approved. Um, low immunogenicity, because you want a repeat dose. Now, if, you've, if your immune system notices your therapeutic and then, and then jumps up and says, OK, no more of this, good luck. I hope you fixed the problem the first time, because you're not dosing that again. These are the important ones. And there is a matrix by which these are combined and you will find that almost every use has some big red, um, big red thing in there that says you cannot do this in this combination in the present technolog technological environment. Next slide, if you would. So we assemble these constraints. So my specific issues are usually along the lines of, hey, I want months of expression. I want to access the nucleus because I want to use DNA. Um, I want no integration. I want to put it in the thymus, but I don't want it to ha in any other endothelial tissue, or indeed anywhere else in the body. I want to be able to redose it anytime I want, so I don't want the immune system to react to it. And uh, I want to just give someone an intravenous injection um, and have done with it, and just be one time only. Great, you can't do that for anything. Replace thymus with any organ, can't do this, unless it's the liver, in which case, yes, you can, but any other organ, no. So you can't, because we can't do this, Almost everything that we could do with gene therapies, almost everything, is currently impossible, quote, unquote. Or at least it's a deep tech project and spend 10 years on it and spend a lot of money on the various people out there who are arms merchants who will tell you that they will make capsids for you or whatever. So we need to solve this problem. What we need, back to the problem, the, the original statement, is just some, just some way of doing this that works eight out of 10 times and is, is appropriate and gets the job done. Because even if you get partial expression of your vector, you're still a million times better than a small molecule therapy. And the current approach of work in the research community where people go use gene therapies to prove the point or genetically altered mice to prove the point and then say, oh, well, we can't do the thing that actually really works that we just proved works. So let's go find a small molecule that slightly affects the, um, the genes in question that will get us to a phase one, and then we make the investors money, and then we sell it to Big Pharma, and then Big Pharma looks at it and says, well, that's a really marginal effect. Let's can this program. And then everybody's happy except everybody. So move on. Next slide. I'm not really cynical. This is just the way the world works. So <laughs> time, yes. 
but speed it up. What can we do? This. Um, and we can move on. Everybody knows this. You can do long-term expression. You can do short-term expression. You can't do anything in the middle. I everyone just, knows this. Everyone knows this. <laughs> what does not work, what I just said. You can't do mid-term length of expression. This is what you need to do for nearly every type of therapy. Or indeed, you can't do anything outside the liver. And that, this is basically the roadblock. Next slide. We need a way to have a specific duration. Um, and this is, this, there's ways of doing this in, th in theory, but none of them appear to work in practice. And move on. Can you repeat dose messenger RNA? In principle, yes. In, no, we, in, in practice, no, we haven't solved the problems. And people can come talk to me about what these problems are. Next slide. And the secondary, most important problem is that we can't target things. We can't target enough vector to your tiny organ without causing liver toxicity by delivering enormous amounts of a vector to the liver, unless you can inject people, but you can't because 0.2% mortality rate in old people for any injection of an internal organ. Next slide. So where do we look? Um, AAV, maybe. Um, mRNA, maybe. Computer-guided computer injections that have zero mortality effectively, maybe. But who knows? Nobody knows. There's lots of prospective approaches, but none of them are really totally, completely proven. And next slide probably the final one. In summary, why don't we have gene therapies? Because you can't make something that, that solves the problem for nearly all of the uses. And God damn it, why use, my use is one of those uses. So somebody needs to fix this problem for me, please, because I'm trying to run a company to get something done, and I don't have time to run a company to solve this problem as well. Thank you. The end. All right. Wonderful. Thank you.